Back on CBS Sports HQ, Broncos country on a new ride. A surprise to some with super senior Bo Nix, the object of Sean Payton's attention. Nix nabbed at 12 and soon to be tasked with leading a cash, cash draft, excuse me, Broncos roster into their rebuild. We're working on things as well. Joe Musso alongside Ryan Wilson, Rick Spielman here to assess the Broncos first and foremost. Nix at 12 felt like a reach to some, but Sean Payton identified his guy, loves the mind of Bo Nix and maybe a coming of age tale over these next couple years. Nix and beyond, what did you like most? Again, the Broncos a B minus and you talk about Bo Nix. Is it a stretch? Clearly the, the Broncos didn't think so. George Payton and Sean Payton, you talk about super senior Bo Nix. But the issue for me, Rick, is that he's the sixth quarterback taken in this draft. By the 12th pick is, is what is also hard to wrap your head around. And typically, first-round quarterbacks work out at about a 50% hit rate. So there's a pretty good chance that Bo Nix and two other young men in the first round won't work out at the quarterback position. But I did love the Jonah Ellis pick. I've been talking about him for some time. I think he's a juice of edge rusher. Uh, as Rick informed me, he has family ties to, to football in the league. Troy Franklin. Had a chance to go higher. I thought he slipped a little bit. Uh, we talked about Ennis Rakestraw, the, the cornerback out of Missouri. His teammate, Chris Abram Strain, was also a really good player. And then Audrey Estime, uh, he's going to bring some toughness. He's not a burner, but I think between the tackles, he can get you a little bit. Yeah, when you read some of the clips and how they're describing the Bo Nix pick, it was like a Sean Payton arrogant pick because you can disagree with me and I'm going to prove you wrong. Oh. So mm. there are things that I think Sean saw, you know, what he did with Drew Brees. But I, the other question is, what other quarterback has he had success with like a Drew Brees? So it didn't have it with Jamison Williams, I would say. So, but Teddy Bridgewater went down there and was like 5-0 and oh, uh, when he had to play for Drew Brees. Who drafted him? I did, but don't oh, worry okay. about it. we're not talking about me. We're talking about these teams. <laughs> so, but you're right. Joan Ellis is actually Luther Ellis's, one of Luther Ellis's 10 kids. I believe he adopted mm. a lot of kids. Luther Ellis was our first or second round pick when I first started scouting uh, up with the Detroit Lions okay. out of the Utah. Uh, great family, great kid. Troy Flank Franklin. I described you as a weaver. You're still getting over that. I'm sure you went back and told your wife, hey, hon, Rick keeps saying these guys are weavers. <laughs> he In other words, weaver. he's not a really Doesn't sharp run route runner. But he has vertical speed. He can go up and get the ball, and they're going to marry him and Bo Nix together. This is not about my tape either. <laughs> uh, Sean Payton, nice enough to sit with us in Las Vegas. Myself, Pete Prisco, had a great conversation with Coach. This was prior to Russ leaving that franchise. And we talked about the importance of that win over Kansas City to build mm. the belief, get things headed in the right direction for that franchise. They will now follow in the steps of their new quarterback in Bo Nix. We'll see how it all adds up. Those Chiefs, they somehow got better as well. Answered the phone, we moved up, added speed. What was the issue last year? Drop balls, wide receiver. Well, they got a game breaker here with their first overall pick at 28th overall. Xavier Worthy out of Texas and beyond. You love this draft, Ryan. A, I give it an A, and I, I just can't give it an A plus because they have everything already. It's like, you know, Rick lives on his island in the mansion. I, I don't want to go give him a Rolls Royce, so I give him a souped-up Honda. So this is a souped-up Honda. Okay. And, and Xavier Worthy's driving, you know, really fast in the souped-up Honda. 421 speed. We saw that at the combine. He's 6'1", 172. Uh, he plays tough than that size, but Rick has concerns with the size, and he can talk about that. Kingsley Sumatea, I, I heard they had some interest in him. He has right tackle, left tackle versatility, and they get a bargain. There were some conversations that he'd be a top 50 pick. Rick's guy, Jared Wally, tied in, and that, that got my attention, Rick. Uh, Talking about Jared Wally going to a team that also has Travis Kelsey, what that offense is going to look like. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I mean, the one thing that Kansas City had to do was improve that receiver room, and it's unfortunate that Rasheed Rice had to go through and do what he did this offseason because mm. he's probably going to miss maybe five to six games, depending on what happens when uh, the suspension comes down from the league. But Xavier Worthy, if you want to call him Ty Tyreek Hill, I, th I think that's what you're referring to. I don't know if he has the same hands as Tyreek Hill. Fair I enough. did catch a few glimpses on tape that there were drops, and yep. he does have to clean them up, but there's no question about now him and Hollywood Brown vertically stretching the field, and when she Rice comes back, mm -hmm. that's going to be a heck of a combination. But the tight end, Wiley, uh, the TCU kid, I liked him as a blocker. I loved him as a pass catcher and an athletic tight end. That's 6'6", 240-some, ran in the four sixes. Reminded me a little of a poor man's Travis Kelsey. Mm. The draft is one thing. Player development is the next step, and few do it better than this franchise currently in Kansas City. They're going to get the most out of these guys, whatever those ceilings are. 
The Raiders, on the other hand, player development and draft often coming into question here. It's a franchise that goes about their business the way they want under a number of different front offices. Head scratchers are the theme. D did you see a through line to this draft strategy this season, Ryan? Uh, no, to, to hesitate. You could say no. Answer. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it felt... Ebbed, ebbed and flowed, okay. maybe, is the way to put it. I gave him a B minus. The Brock Bowers pick, he's a top 10 pick, and much the same way we talk about Michael Penix Jr. being a really good football player. The fit is where you question what's going on, especially given that they drafted Michael Mayer in round two. I know that uh, Luke Getzey, the new offensive coordinator, likes to run 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends, so that part I get. I love Jackson Powers Johnson there. I actually was really high on Delmar Glaze. I thought he might go at the end of uh, day two, and that's what happened. We talked to Tommy Eichenberg, incredibly soft-spoken, Rick, but he plays with an edge. And Dylan Lobby out of New Hampshire, we saw him down at the Senior Bowl, and he's a good player. I just wonder about the athleticism. They did fill some needs along the offensive line, which they had to do. They got some cornerback help, but only on day three. So I don't know how much better they are compared to the other teams in that division. Yeah, I know Tom very well. In fact, we were co-chairs of the GM committee that was a subcommittee off the competition committee, if you can put all That's those. That's a lot of committees. <laughs> That's yeah. a busy man. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Tom, I think, is does very well what he does. He's <laughs> going to truly follow his board. We're going to talk about it a little bit later, Joe, on some of the things that I observed. But mm -hmm. Brock Bowers was just too good of a talent to pass up. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, we all thought, and I thought he was going to go in the first round, and mm. I really loved him because he thought that I dressed with drip when he had him on his stage. <laughs> I don't know what drip means, but apparently Sorry it means it's snort. a compliment. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't as high on Glaze as you was. I thought that he struggled down at the Senior Bowl, especially when they moved him inside the guard. And then Eichenberg is just an old school, mm. two down Mike football player. So he followed his board. A lot of times, GMs, the first time they get to work with a new scouting staff, you struggle a little bit because you don't know how they grade. So you're trying to grade and try to put all the grades together until you work for a couple of years. It's just like anything else. You get to know each other. I knew that if this scout said this about a receiver, I'm going to go the opposite way because he was horrible with the receiver, but I did respect what he said. That sounds familiar, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Rick, I know we're teaching you some wagering terminology here yes. over the hour and then some. I know you know how over-unders work because there was a wager on the With the First Pick podcast as it pertains to the Chargers draft, and well, you could tell who the winner was. Over, under, Two and a half Michigan players drafted by Coach Harbaugh to L.A. Sharp number set by producer Debo. It comes in at two. two. Seventh round, 33rd pick in that round. Cornelius Johnson, the wide receiver out of Michigan, makes it two to go along with Junior Holson, the linebacker from the national champions. Joe Alt off the top here. Hard to argue with. Certainly the type of player that Harbaugh was trying to bring into this facility. The luck I've had, or the lack of luck I've had in these $1 bets, I would not have been surprised that Jim Hart traded up after pick 253. <laughs> get another one in there. One more Michigan one more. I tried to text him to see if he would do that. I said, I have a dollar on this and you get three Michigan Help players. me out here. So I gave the Chargers an A-. minus. The Joe All pick, I get it, man. He's such a good football player. Dominant at Notre Dame. I, I just wonder the right tackle, left tackle conversation because he's a left tackle only, at least before he made his way to Los Angeles. Leighton McConkie, home run. There's no one happier, I would imagine, than Justin Herbert. Junior Colson is an absolute baller in the middle of that defense. And Cam Hart is someone that, that Rick liked a little bit more than I did, but he's a long, uh, rangy cornerback. I think he's a little stiff at times, pro probably primarily outside, but he had some depth uh, on day three. Yeah, no. I think that they went into this and they knew that they were going to be a much more physical team than they have been in the past. They're going to run a football and they want to stop the run. Uh, and sign, or Drafting Colson, that's what this guy does. He's a very good Mike linebacker that goes sideline to sideline, can find the ball, good enough in coverage. And uh, a boogie bee uh, from Alabama, the defensive tackle. This guy is a five technique, extremely explosive. I saw him plays with high energy, high effort. This is a hardball type pick. I wish they would have went with one more Michigan player. <laughs> I'm a half a player short, so yeah. I don't know if that's... From a you, push. We call that a push if you got a half a player there. Yeah, I didn't know you can put a hook on a player. Well, if you ask, if you ask Pete Prisco, a kicker is. is a half a player, so that might have put money to, back in everybody's pockets. He wants you to realize that he understands what hook means. We got I, it. I learned okay. that last yeah, fall. There we go. We got you guys on the hook. More coming here on CBS Sports HQ. First, a look at those odds, and to no surprise, it is the Chiefs to lose. Everybody wrote them off last season. They lost that game to the Raiders on Christmas. Mm. Well, there's going to be a ring ceremony early next season. Minus 230 the price if you like the Chiefs to do it again.